This is the campus of Florida A&M University. It's February, and that means Black History Month for black people in the United States to reflect upon where they've been, where they're going, and where they are now. Black people have been freed in a sense of social freedom. They can go anywhere they want to go. But still, black people remain to be one of the poorest and uneducated people in America. Dr. Bailey, what progress have blacks made economically since the movement of the 60s? I think that uh, immediately during the 60s and immediately after, uh, blacks were doing fairly well. I think but uh, since the latter part of the 60s, blacks have found themselves in a state of complacency. And by this I mean we have uh, been too comfortable and as a consequence of which we're losing our grip on things and slowly but surely we're being pushed back to the period before the 60s when we had a kind of tokenism and the evidence of that comes through things like the Bakke case for example where we're going to lose our opportunities to go to med school and other professional schools but most importantly is the Weber case out in Louisiana with that kind of case uh, coming forward we're going to lose our opportunity for jobs for work and it means then that the cycle will almost be complete no education no work and we'll be right back where we started and if we don't get out of this lethargy or this complacency or this idea that somehow we've got it made then we're going to find ourselves following that old cycle that carried us from one form of slavery to another. Okay? Are the political assesses, uh, economical assets being retarded the most now? Well, I, I think the economics and politics, uh, they normally go hand in hand. If uh, you have the political system on your side, then economics will come usually. Uh, that is unless you're living in a country where externally uh, others control it. But in this country, if we have the politics on our side, if those in charge of the governmental system, that is, if those individuals are on our side, then it means that we can advance educationally and with that economically. But both right now are being retarded. I think we're in a state of limbo and unless we get off a dead center soon, we will find that we are slowly but surely being pulled back to the period prior to the 1960s. According to Dr. Bailey, black people are caught up in a vicious cycle. We better get something done. See Edward Mack, reporting for WMF News. How was the Black Archives founded? It was f established by the Florida legislature in 1971 to be a repository for Afro-American history and culture through the state of Florida. We officially opened in 1976, during the bicentennial year. What is the correlation between the Black Archives and Black History and Black History Month? Black Archives is responsible for selecting the speaker for Afro-American History Month, and we plan the all-university convocation every year, put up an exhibit every year, especially on black people for the particular month of February. Okay, now this archive plays a very important part in black history. Can you tell me why? Because we have here the memorabilia, the exhibits, and the uh, papers of great Afro-American people. So in other words, we have the evidence of what we have achieved over the many centuries we've been in this country. What do you feel are some of the most outstanding things that you have here? Well, naturally, I think everything is outstanding. But I take a lot of interest in the slave chains and then some of the official papers we have on hand, the Liberator by William Lloyd Garrison, the Hopper's Weekly, depicting the fresh blacks casting the first ballot. And I take a lot of emphasis on a lot of interest in the Harry Tubman collection and the Cannonball Addict collection. Mr. Eton, can you tell me about the postcard display in your office? That's part of my personal coon memorabilia. And those postcards simply depict the uh, attitude and the expression of white people towards black people during the last half century. In other words, those postcards were sent all over the world and depicting us as being half semi-human. 
But Richard, whatever happened to the Afro? The Afro? The Afro's still around. It's just a, it's just a shorter version, you know. But the the full is still around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most people are wearing their hair short now. Why is that? Well, it's hairstyles, just like clothing. It's it's a, it's a, it's just a cycle, you know. And eventually, it, it'll get back to the Afro because it was the Afro a long time ago, back in the 30s and 20s. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it'll it'll eventually get back around to it. Yeah. Black people at one time identified blackness with the Afro. What do they identify with this new short style? Well, they are uh, they are trying for business like now, you know. They uh, they want to they want to be clean cut. They want to they want to keep the, they want to keep the hair clean and everything, you know. The Afro, the big Afro, just no way you could keep it clean as you want it to, you know. And people people want to keep it clean. They want to look sharp, you know. Well, what's the most uh, well, what's the major hairstyle of black women out there? Major style black women now, I would say, uh, I would say the straight hair. They, yeah, they either getting the perm or they getting the uh, the straight, you know, the hot comb straightening. What do you call this style? This style, well, this is it's a, it's another version of a straight style, and it's uh, just a versatile haircut, but it's the, it's a straight style, it's just the hot, you know, using the hot hot comb and hot curls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where do you think hairstyles, black hairstyles, gonna end up? Where it's gonna end up? It, it'll, it'll, uh, from right now, it'll end up back to the fro. That's the last thing. That's the last thing we had with the fro. It just, we just left the fro. I think eventually we get back around to the fro. Thank you.